take our bells, let's get them lined up so that the handles are parallel with each other. Okay, so you guys are gonna work in a crew here because it's gonna help us to get some really good deadlifts. So first things first, partner one, go ahead and step right over the bells, just like I have them here. Partner two, you're kind of just off to the side a little bit, and you're gonna help your partner get in a really good position, all right? So we step right over so that the handles are pretty much in line with our middle of our foot, right in front of our shins. That's where we want to set up. Make sure you get there. Feet are a little bit outside of hip width, okay? Now make your arms really straight. Let's shrug our shoulders down. Triceps should be nice and straight, right? So your triceps should be engaged here. Now, without losing that position, I want everyone to reach your butt back and go down until you feel your hands hit the bell. Now, from here, pull your hips down just a little bit until you start to feel your hamstrings and your glutes engaging. You should feel your lats. I want everybody to crush the bell. Crush the bell with your grip. Squeeze that bell as tight as you can. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Now, don't stand up with the bells. Let go of the bells and stand up. Let's go down here. Let's crush grip these bells and go ahead and pull five good deadlifts for me. Get back to that position. Don't rush it. Go slow on the way down, lock it in, and pick up nice and quick. Good. Come on, guys. Squeeze the same exact thing, right? And then I'm just going to stand up and make my pull. It's the same lift. You don't have to change anything. The only difference now is that the weight is way out here instead of being right under us. So it just changes where you're going to feel in your body. But if you can focus on linking your whole frame together and getting into that same position, which we're going to go through step by step right now with the bars, you guys are going to crush Devin's, all right? Let's talk about the starting position, okay? So if I, we're gonna do all of these things right now. There's a, a clean sequence of things we can do to get you good pulls. And we're just gonna go one by one. Step one is to find your stance, okay? So partner one, step up. Your, oh no, come on now, there we go. Bars at the center of your feet. Your feet are slightly, slightly wider than your hips, okay? And I want your feet pointed out at like 30 to 45 degrees. If you're in a trap bar, the middle of your foot should be right in line with, that, with the bars that go out to the side there, like that where the weights go, okay? Step right up to the bar, guys. Your shins should be on the bar when you're getting ready to get it. Remember, feet are just outside the hip. Okay, feet outside the hip, point your toes out just a little bit. Good, now let's go down and grab the bar. We're always gonna go double overhand, just like we did with our kettlebell deadlift, okay? Now I want you to crush that bar, crush that bar. Now, everybody look down. Your arms should be inside your knees, just inside your knees, so that you don't pick your knees when you pick up. Remember the spot you're feeling on the bar, because that's going to be the spot that you're going to use. Go ahead and take it. So, cue number two, we're going to get our setup position really, really good, all right? So, everybody, partner one, go ahead and step up to the bar. Partner two, let's eye our partner's position and make sure they're getting just right. I want everybody to go like this for me. Everybody stand up, right over your bar. Your shins should be on it if you're the one working right now. Shins on the bar. Feet right where we discussed, right? Shoulders a little out, or sorry, feet a little outside of hips. Toes pointed out just a little bit. Thumb on your sternum with your palm down. Back of the hand, kick your side right here. Good, open up. Remember, that's not where we want to be. Exhale, get that here. Pack that in. You're trying to create this relationship where your rib cage is stacked right on top of your pelvis, okay? Now, from here, we are set. This has got to be our core position the rest of the time. The whole goal of deadlifting is to keep your spine in a neutral position throughout the lift. So now when I go down, I got to hinge through my hips, keep that position. I'm locked in here. I'm going to grab the bar and take a breath into my abdomen so I create a bubble of air. That's going to give me some stability. So, everybody stand up really quick. Check it out. Everybody set that position. Okay, now you're gonna go down to the bar, and I want you to grab onto that bar and pull yourself down, okay? Your shins should be vertical, or nearly vertical right here. Your sternum should be right over the bar. Right over the bar, hold on there. Now everybody, drop your shoulders down, pack those shoulders down like you guys know how to do with bells. Up your chest up just a little bit. Good, don't go anywhere yet. I want you to be looking six to 10 feet out in front of you. Hold this position, okay? You can shift your hips up or down, or maybe put your weight slightly more on your heels. Find where you feel the most glute engagement, because this is gonna be where you wanna be when you make your pulls. Okay, don't make a pull. Stand up, take it out. Like that. Keep breath in. Exhale, through your abs. Okay, after engaging, engaging, engaging. Good, now, my breath is uh, into my belly, through my nose, 
fill up a pressure bubble of air in the belly, right? I like to do that at the bottom, so I'll go exhale, set my ass, and I'll go down here and I'll grab that bar. And this is where I'll take my breath. Big belly breath, not a big one, but like a quarter of the air that I could get in. And that's how we set a pressure bubble in our abs, is really important. Now, when we talk about gripping the ground with our toes, that's gonna be a great way for you guys to keep that chain that I talked about from the ground all the way through to the bar, right? So you gotta go through your whole body to get down to the bar. So let's all go down. If you're wearing shoes right now, maybe take them off. You don't have to, but I want you to think about gripping the ground with your feet. So let's go ahead and set up for our perfect deadlift, partner one. Shins right up on the bar. Pull yourself down. Take your breath down before you lift. I want you to grip the ground with your feet, and I want you to think about pushing out your side pockets. Open space to your hips by literally thinking about pushing your side pockets out. Get tight and pull that bar. Now what we're gonna do now is we're gonna wedge ourselves into the ground and under the bar. This is really important when the weight is super heavy. You might not feel this as much when the weight is light, okay? But what I'm gonna have you guys do here is you're gonna set up just like you have, and you're actually gonna use the weight of the bar to pull your body weight back into your heels and to get a maximal stretch of your hamstrings, okay? So do all the same stuff. Anchor and sit your hips back. You should feel your hamstrings stretching and your glutes loaded. So the pelvis isn't going down, it's just going back. Once you feel that hamstring load, okay? Lock it in there and feel good. Make a pull. Make a pull. Pull using that hamstring tension. Guys, you don't never want to pull a deadlift unless you feel that. If you're not feeling that tension, it might be that you set your hips too low, or it might be that your knees have slipped too far forward. That's not a good way to pull because you're going to use your back. Partner two, let's go find that Put this thought in your mind on this next one. Do your setup, just like we talked about. Get down there, make tension, and when you make your pull, I want you to think about one sort of ramping up effort. You're not going to rip the bar off the ground as fast as you can at the start. You're going to let that effort ramp up without losing your position at all. So very connected to the ground, feeling like your entire body is doing the work. Stand up, all right? So ramp the effort up until we lock out with a lot of power. Let's try that for two deadlifts with our moderate size one here. Okay, last thing to think about here, guys, is getting the bar down to the ground after you've already lifted it, right? This is a spot where people can damage themselves, right? You see it all the time with kettlebell swings when people do a last lazy hinge to get the, bar, the bell out of their hands. Same thing with the bar, okay? I don't want you to necessarily be super active to try to like slow the bar down on the way, on the way down. What I want you to do Take a breath in and hinge back, where you just kind of throw your weight back into your heels and let the bar go down, okay? The one big thing is don't let it go so fast that you slam it to the ground, okay? So it's got a little bit of control on it, but not too much. And I don't want you to think about lowering the bar. I want you to just think about pinching your hips and letting the bar go down to the ground, okay? So let's all pull two deadlifts. When you get to the top, hold there for me, and then let's just focus on hinging back and so for my deadlifters, has anyone here ever done a mixed grip deadlift where you change your grip, right? So look, we only want to do that when the, when the weight is so heavy that our grip is the thing that's limiting us from doing heavy, okay? You don't want to do that too often because it exposes your bicep on the arm that you do like this, and it also makes your spine asymmetrical, okay? So it makes the loading on your spine asymmetrical. So it's just a little bit of risk here, right? So we only want to do that when it's our really heavy deadlift, and when we do that, we want to make sure that we're alternating set to set. Don't always go to one mixed grip, okay? Your mixed grip back and forth, okay? Has everyone got that? It's just a, like, just don't do that while you're just warming up and stuff. That's what we want to use only when we get to the back end of our program. Okay. This is just a little advice from, from someone who's hurt himself deadlifting before. Um, check your needle at the door. Guys, most of your deadlifts should be in the 80% range, like 75 to 85%. That's where strength and performance is built. If you're pulling deadlifts where you're grinding and you feel like it's heavy, that's not the way to get strong. That's the way to get injured. So I've only stressed that so much because of course you care about your health.